We welcome you to the official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. I'm Mike Keith, joined by Amy Wells. Welcome, Miss Wells. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And happy to be joined by our special guest, the general manager of your Tennessee Titans, John Robinson, from, I guess, the draft cave at his home. Is that accurate? Mike Keith, good morning. That would be accurate. Um, here in uh, 2020 Titans Draft Headquarters, otherwise known as the theater at my house. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide which room it was going to be? I tried to get somewhere that was going to be large enough to um, handle all the equipment that 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 I'm going to need, that we're going to need to, to kind of navigate through the draft and, and a way that could be sequestered away from my dog so that when we're on camera, um, and, and they're barking, at least hopefully uh, America won't hear them. How much equipment do you have in that particular room? Give us just a general idea of what's in there. We're going to pull the curtain back probably next week. I'm going to have my daughter come in and, and, and take some, some video and, and take some pictures and we'll send it out on social media. But I've got two Microsoft Surfaces, one iPad, uh, two screens, one TV, um, a phone bank system, two phones, and then a projection screen that the draft will be on uh, that I'll be watching. So can we expect a Titans draft specific episode of your family vlog? That has been so much fun to watch these last couple of weeks. It's been good for us to just kind of get out of the house for a little bit and um, stay socially distanced, ride around, have some fun, yuck it up as a family. And then my, my daughter, Taylor, she's, she loves editing that stuff. Um, and going through it takes quite a bit of time, but um, it's just a it's just a good family fun thing for us to do. So explain that for people who don't know and haven't had the pleasure of seeing what Taylor's been doing. We've gotten out the the last three um, three of the last four Saturdays and just kind of just kind of rode, rode around uh, Nashville. We went out to Pinewood this past um, uh, Sunday for and picked up some Easter. Uh, lunch after our virtual church service and it's just been we, we, we do kind of carpool karaoke we, we crack on each other we make <laughs> jokes um, there's a lot of dad jokes in there that I get ribbed about um, it's just been kind of a, a fun thing for us to um, get out of our confines here at, at the house and, and and enjoy our great city for a little bit well it has been good stuff it's been very enjoyable to see a different side of the general manager, John Robinson, dad with the dad jokes and everything. It's been, uh, it's been good. And we commend Taylor on her editing. She is very talented. All on a phone, Mike, all on a phone. She did not get those skills from her father, although I am somewhat tech savvy. Um, I am certainly no editor of video. Aren't you glad you're tech savvy in this moment though? I mean, aren't you thankful Absolutely. Because, you know, if I didn't know how to create, you know, documents and move documents and do this and do that, um, it, it, it would be much more challenging. You'd have to try to have somebody set that up for you and then just run it. Um, but our IT staff has done a great job, you know, coming over here and getting me set up. Russ Hudson, they've been to Coach Rabel's house and uh, Ryan Cowden, our VP of player personnel, John Salgi's house, those guys, just getting all those guys set up so that um, that we can navigate. We did a mock draft yesterday internally, which went pretty good. Uh, it went actually it went excellent um, with be, being able to manipulate the draft boards and the pick boards, stuff that we use in the draft room. It went really, really good. And we're super, super stoked at how it went off. And uh, I think we'll be able to pull this thing off pretty good. And that was one of the first things that you started to do when you took over as Titans general manager is you converted the personnel and the football staff to a lot more technology. There were ways that you thought the process could be streamlined, could make you more effective, and could take more advantage of your time by doing so. Yeah, when when I when I first came here in 2016, the 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 depth chart was on an old magnetic board, um, and it had the had the tags, and and they were stuck up there, and you you physically got up and moved those guys around. And you know, I I asked Amy, could we incorporate these? You know. 70 inch touchscreen monitors that that those depth charts could live on and you could you could manipulate those and they would all be they would all be tied together with the, the personnel staff and the coaching staff so that you know when I make a change to a to a depth chart or coach Rebel, we're, we're all seeing the same thing it doesn't live maybe in my office behind the screen we still have the the magnetic draft board in the draft room that we typically use 
Um, but we, we've always had kind of a an Excel document or you know some type of computer program that had a draft board that we that we kept in place as well. So the technology that we had put in place, um, you know, in 2016 we got here certainly paying dividends has paid dividends, but certainly in these times. I apologize for being rude, and Amy, I especially apologize for being rude to you immediately on the program because we have an audience today. And this is only the second time we have ever had a live audience for the official Titans podcast. Titans season ticket members are joining us live. We want to welcome all of you. And Amy, we want to include all of them. Please explain how they can be involved with Titans general manager John Robinson today on the OTP. Absolutely. Go on Twitter and use hashtag OTPQ. I will see your questions. We will ask them of John Robinson, Mike Keith. Whatever questions you want to ask, send them over. Tell Mike Keith being rude. It's okay. And we'll, uh, we'll ask the questions. Hashtag OTPQ. That's what you need. It's great to have them on. Um, they're, they're the lifeblood of our program. They're why we do what we do. Can't say uh, enough thank yous and and how much we appreciate their support um, year in and year out of what we tried to build here with the program. And, and, and certainly in these times where we're all kind of at home, you know, we can't wait to get back out, out there on the grass and, and start to work as a team to put a product out next fall um, that, that everybody can be proud of and come to Nissan Stadium and root us on. So hashtag OTPQ, OTPQ. And Amy Wells will include your questions in some that we already have. Many of you have gone to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and submitted questions, and we will give those to John. But while we're passing out some thank yous, uh, I saw something at uh, the Titans Twitter site this morning that was really great, and it was the Ascension St. Thomas team, John, out at a remote site testing people, helping, and, man, you talk about heroes. Uh, Our partners at Ascension St. Thomas doing an amazing job during this incredible time. Yeah, can't can't say enough thank yous and um, how, how proud we are that that they're um, out there on the front lines. The you know the doctors, nurses, the techs, the administrators, um, the security staffs at these hospitals, um, taking care of, of of the city of Nashville, the people of Nashville. Um, just a a lot of selfless acts um, on, on their part to. Um, to put to put this community first and try to keep us healthy and safe. And our partnership with St. Thomas is a strong one and, and, and just can't say enough how, how proud we are to be partnering with them. Good stuff. Let's get to the questions. Amy, I think I've got the first one. And it is from Edward from Port Lavaca, Texas. All right, Edward says, John, what, if any, concerns do you have about how the draft is going to be conducted And what kinds of precautions are being taken to avoid technical failures in the draft? Yeah, I think probably the the biggest thing is is just making sure that um, that that we're secure, that the internet line and and the communication pieces are secure. Again, our IT staff has come out and put several firewalls in place. I don't even really know what a firewall is, except it helps you. um, they, they've done that and we've got backup power. We've got a generator coming next week. If, you know, in the light unlikely event that that power happens to go out, you know, we can, we can, that'll kick in and, and the draft room, we can stay up and running. We put some, some, hopefully some fail safe measures in place um, to prevent anything from, from go, going awry and uh, feel really good about you know, where, where we're going. Cole from McAllen, Texas asks, what has been the most challenging part of this whole pandemic process for you? That's a good question. You know, I think there, there's been a lot of things that we've had to work through. Um, you know, this time of the year when you, when you prep for the draft, there's, there's so many meetings, there's so many interactions that you have, you know, certainly with the prospects and getting to know those guys, if they're going to fit your, your locker room, fit the culture that we've tried to build here. Um, getting the, the the opinions and the evaluations of the coaches and the scouts. A lot of these these web conference um, like we're on now, those those have really uh, been crucial for us to to maintain that communication flow. Uh, we FaceTime several prospects and talk to them virtually on the phone, and it hasn't been um, perfect, you know, con- you know, compared to normal years. But but I would say, given where we're at, I feel really good about you know where where we're at now is in draft prep. Let's stay out west for our next question. This is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
Um, I've been to Albuquerque before. I've been to Albuquerque a couple of summers ago, as a matter of fact. Lilo from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I always go into Larry King when I get these cities I don't. Lilo from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hello. What is your favorite position to scout? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, That's a real good one. I like the lines of scrimmage. I like watching the big guys, um, probably because that's where, you know, I played in high school and college, specifically on the defensive line and the offensive line. I like watching those guys and, and it's it's a it's a one on one, um, man against man fist fight battle. It's the true form of football. I, I like scouting all the positions, but I would say the the line to scrimmage players are probably my favorite. Mike from Erie, Pennsylvania asks, how big of a priority might it be to acquire some more draft picks in this year's draft with the Titans still having a lot of depth positions to fill out? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, kind of we're talking through now and, and you know, where, where we're picking it at 29, you know, there's going to be 28 guys that, that come off the board before we can select unless we, we slide up. And when you slide up, you've got to give up a pick. And um, so we'll just have to monitor that and see what the cost of that business um, will be on draft night. But yeah, I think we've we've proven that we're willing to move around on draft days, you know, go up, go back, uh, whatever it may be to try to position ourselves to um, to improve the football team. And again, we're, we're not going to play until until September. We've got to get ready for training camp. We're going to have a 90 man roster. It's going to be competitive. Um, certainly we would like to get as many draft picks as possible, but you know, the post draft process, there's still some veterans out there that we could circle back on, continue to add depth to the team. But yeah, moving around on draft day is something that I really enjoyed uh, doing to try to get as much draft currency as I, as I always say as possible. Jamie from Oxford, England in the United Kingdom asks, what are your thoughts about playing in London again? It would be great to have you back. As long as they don't water down the pitch, as they say, uh, like they did last time. Um, the, the, the field was a little soggy when we played. But we had a great experience over there. Um, the, you know, the fans were great. I think one of, the, one of the cool things that when we drove in as a team to the stadium, just seeing the, the, the football fans, and they had every jersey. You would see a Titans jersey. You'd see a Bengals jersey. You'd see a Patriots jersey. You'd see a Vikings jersey. They were just coming to watch the sport of football and just, you know, support the love of the game. Um, so we had a good experience over there. And if we're kind of at the mercy of the league, uh, if they tell us we're going over there to play, then we'll get on a plane, fly over, and, uh, and try to win a ball game. All right, I want to start with a question from Twitter using hashtag OTPQ. Matt asks, we have fans have been hearing about how the draft process from home is going to be a hindrance for clubs. What can the Titans do to exploit this opportunity and use it to our advantage? Yeah, that's good. Well, I think I think we've, we've got, we're going to have a mock draft with the the league on um, Monday at noon, and I think probably during that two hour mock, we'll see how uh, ready other teams are. But certainly, if if teams are not maybe as equipped as as we are i feel really good about where we're at from you know an equipment standpoint and a tech tech standpoint then sure maybe you, you could take advantage of of of, a, of another team um, but we've been instructed like that with trades and all that and because of the unique situation you know typically when when the when the time goes down and, and let's just say the let's just say we're on the clock and and the time were to run out well the Packers behind us, they could they could jump us and and turn a card in. I don't think that's going to happen in this year's draft simply because they're they're given they're going to be a little bit more lenient with clubs just to make sure that a we either get the pick in of the player uh, that we want or we get the trade consummated. Here's a question from Jack in Arlington. What kinds of questions do you ask players during those virtual meetings that you've had? It's pretty much the same questions that we would ask typically when they come into to our building. If we've if we if we've spent some time with them either at the Senior Bowl or or maybe at uh, at the Combine, uh, it may be follow up questions on things. Uh, one of the things uh, standard questions that we've been asking them: a, a are they safe and is their family safe? And, and making sure that's they're good to go there. Have they been working out? What's their routine like on a daily basis? Just trying to make sure that they're staying on top of. Um, preparing to be football players, and then just getting to know them as as people. We we talked to to one player last week, and we met his grandmother on a Facetime call. Sweet lady, she was great. And um, so it's it, you typically typically don't meet grandma uh, when you're interviewing. <laughs> 
um, some, some of those things have been pretty cool. Now, Matt, using hashtag OTPQ, asked, what is the best thing a prospect can say to you during a pre-draft meeting? Probably when we ask them, um, what do you envision your role being on, on, on the team next year? I don't want them to come in and say, well, I want to be a rookie all pro. I mean, the personal goals are good. We all have personal goals. But I think when a player says, I, I want to come in and help the team, in whatever role that you guys asked me to play, I want to be a good teammate. I want to get to know my teammates and I want to win. And I think when they can then talk in and kind of team goals about helping the team and being a good teammate and winning, that's the most important thing. That's more important to me. Um, it's more important to our fans than some rookie, you know, maybe being rookie of the year, but you don't win enough games to get in, in the to playoffs. That's, that's, you know, that's good to have, that, to have those personal goals, but, you know, our goal is to try to work to try to, you know, win the division, get in the tournament, win a championship. If you noticed at the start of this edition of the official Titans podcast, I said this was the OTP brought to you by Farm Bureau Health Plans. And if you thought to yourself, well, that's new, it is. <laughs> Farm Bureau Health Plans is the new sponsor of the official Titans podcast. And I get to mention healthcare coverage from Farm Bureau Health Plans is like an extra set of pads when you need them the most. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. Thank you to our good friend Randy Wilmore and the great people at Farm Bureau Health Plans, now the presenting sponsor of the official Titans podcast. And so we are thrilled to have them. Farm Bureau, obviously a great company, and Farm Bureau Health Plans making a difference in Tennessee for over 70 years. Yeah, it's great to have them a part of us. I think my um I think I've got some family members that are that are employed by Farm Bureau back in West Tennessee and I think my parents actually have Farm Bureau insurance. So um that's really cool. That's good stuff. And Coach Mack is like their big sponsor too. You is he an adjuster? Does he moonlight as an adjuster? <laughs> You know, Charlie is on the Farm Bureau insurance side, and I think he's, I think Coach Max basically the Charlie of Farm Bureau health plans. He's huge. <laughs> he does everything. He's bigger in that than he is in football. It's amazing. But again, in all seriousness, thank you so much to Farm Bureau health plans, and, uh, and thank you to, to Randy and all the good people there. We're excited to have them. Back to the questions. Now, remember, if you're a Titan season ticket member and you're joining us live, you could submit your question via Twitter at hashtag OTPQ, official Titans podcast question, OTPQ. You get it. Kids love the acronyms. They do. But we also have some that have been pre-submitted for John Robinson. We're going to go to Baltimore for the next one. Stacy, as you and Coach Rabel build the 2020 team, I recall an interview where he said, he being Mike Vrabel, he said it's always great to get players younger and cheaper with just as much talent. I get that from a business perspective, but leadership on a team matters. This normally comes from veterans. As we look at 2020, who do you see as your leaders on both sides of the ball? That's always one of the um... – you know, the age old, I mean, back and forth, so you, 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 you want to get younger players on your football team because it helps you with some salary cap because of the way that the CBA is and the salaries and all that. But you can also get you can also get too young. So we try to we try to strike a balance as best as possible. And and some of, you know, the quote unquote younger players on our team, they've developed leadership skills. You know, Kevin Byard's been one of our better uh, leaders. He's a younger player for us. Rashawn Evans has stepped up. Uh, vocally, Daquan Jones is going to, you know, take on some more leadership up front on the D line. He's a younger player. Ben Jones is one of our leaders on offense up front with the line, along with Taylor. Ryan Tannehill, obviously, Derrick Henry stepped up as a leader. Um, so those guys um, taking on more. Even Jonu Smith. Jonu Smith had a great year last year. We're going to put more on his plate and and ask him to kind of pick up that torch that Delaney had carried for us for so many years. And try to and try to show some leadership to to his position group. I've got a lot of questions here from hashtag OTPQ. Will James asked, "How is the league participating in your war room setup? Are they attempting to have all of the teams set up the same way with the same equipment?" Great question. No, I think it's it's been a, up to the team to kind of how how they're going to set up the particular how they're going to work through um, and, and manage the draft. I'm looking at it now. We have a camera 
uh, in here that will have a feed uh, to to you know to the league and to the networks that they'll be able to click over and and see me when when we're on the clock. Um, and I've got a I've got an eight pound bag of M and M's that they sent and you do not. I'll try to get that on camera here at some point. I'll get Can it. We get it now. Yeah, hold on one second. Give me two seconds. Wait a minute. You we have want it. to see this. That's not. He's lying. He's Mike, making it. Mike's going to steal these M&Ms when they you show know, up I on love, camera. I love M&Ms. I know you do. This could be the greatest Almost part of the show. Almost as much as well, it's not very only, it's not only, Maybe it's not exactly eight pounds, but it's a- Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. M&Ms, and they're Titan blue colors with uh, Titans, <laughs> the Titan sword on there. Um, there's a fireball on there. So- uh, Oh man, I've been proven. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That is incredible. We're going to get some good players next weekend, and I'm going to have a sugar rush probably by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next question is from Take on the Titans, and they say, which is harder to do, finding a highly talented player that is fit for your scheme or negotiating a big dollar contract with a hard nosed agent? Um, B. Negotiating a contract? Yeah, it's just because, I mean, you, 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 you dig your heels in and they dig their heels in. We'll find players and we'll find roles for them on, on the team. I, I've got a lot of faith in our, in our scouting staff to evaluate these players um, and, and that are going to fit us. At the end of the day, we, we're trying to be, we try to be fair uh, with, with the players as best as possible. Um, and there has to be an understanding when you're talking uh, contracts and, and you're trying to negotiate that I have to manage – um, a 90 man roster and I have to manage what's going to be a 55 man roster. Um, and there's a lot of salaries and there's only so many ways you can kind of slice that, that amount of m money up. And there has to be some understanding on both sides that we're going to try to try to take care of them as best as possible. But there's other guys that we've got to, we've got to compensate as well. Joel asks using hashtag OTPQ, how will the virtual OTAs work? Will it be like Zoom meetings in separate gyms or mainly check-ins for the players? Or will it be mostly group settings or a whole team? What is that going to look like? Yeah, that's a great question. We've kind of been going back and forth with those memos that the leagues um, sent out over the last two or three days. We've had several web meetings uh, as a staff about how we're going to set that up. Coaches have been working really hard on um on putting up our playbook together, um, adding things over the course of the last three or four months, taking some things out or adjusting some things that they wanted to see better. They, they've done some, some voiceover stuff with plays. We'll get our iPads out to the players. We'll have meetings and we'll have position meetings and maybe an offense defense meeting um, virtually in, in Zoom or Teams or one of, the, one of those uh, venues. Probably won't have a team meeting because it's just a lot of guys to try to get into one um, one web thing and, and talk. Um, but feel, we feel really good about the, the plan we've got laid out so that we can get our guys back to thinking about the X's and O's of football. All right. Nicole asks, have prospects seemed more excited to speak with you and with the Titans this year as opposed to in previous years, maybe because of all of the success the team had in 2019? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when we, when we talk to a lot of these guys, you know, they always say it was fun to watch you guys play there in January, um, the style of football we played, um, the way that we played with with great effort, and, and we worked to, to finish plays snap after snap. Um, so it, it has been good. You know, we're not the, you know, the little old Titans down in, in Nashville. I think that the, the prospects are taking notice of us, and they realize that we've got something pretty cool going on down here. All right. Trent asks, using hashtag OTPQ, when you're doing background research on players and their game character, do you ever interview officials or things like that to get an idea of what a guy's like on the field? Not so much officials. I mean, we obviously talk to their to their coaches. We talk to the equipment staff, trainers, their teammates. One of the things that I like to do is when we're talking to a prospect and there's, you know, maybe there's three or four other players on her team, get their opinion of their of their teammate and say, would you want this guy? Um, would you want to work with this guy for the next, you know, three, four, five years as a teammate? Did you enjoy – your time with him last, you know, the last four years in college as a teammate. That's good perception um, to get from the player side. Here's my last hashtag OTPQ question for a minute. Brad asks, how many years out do you plan your roster? Yeah, that's that's a great question. The main focus is the is the year that you, you live in. But from a from a salary standpoint, you have to look 
um, at least a year ahead, and and you can kind of tinker with two years ahead. Anything beyond that, it just gets it gets a little hard to kind of project and predict because um, you don't know how you know how quickly some of your older players may start to kind of to fade off, or or how quickly some of your younger players uh, take off. Usually, certainly with the current year, but a year ahead and 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 probably two. Outside of that, it gets a little bit long. All right. I said that I wasn't going to ask any more hashtag OTPQ questions for a minute. And I lied because about five people, including Bonnie, have asked, can we order those Titans m and <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no idea, but if I, if I have any left over, maybe I can send one at a time. There's got to be at least. <laughs> Let's see. A single m M&M. and Everyone gets one m M&M. 32 pieces and there's... Uh, 80 servings per container. That's several. I mean, I got a map <laughs> quick in my head. You got about 2,400 NRMs or so, right? That's still pretty good. 2,500, yeah. Wow. Hold on, I'll use my calculator. Thank God. For 2,560. 2,560. Wow. Did you get that, Mike Keith? Did. Nice job, Cotton. Nice job. Oh, here we go, Cotton. I really spruced up for this podcast. I noticed yesterday I did some of the I did some Zoom calls with the TV stations, and I looked like Foghorn Leghorn on TV <laughs> with my hair. So uh, I, I had to I had to give myself a, a haircut this morning. I broke out the Floby and uh, and knocked the top down a little bit. So did you do your own haircut? Who did that? I do it. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. I saved a lot of money in college by cutting my own hair. <laughs> Amy, I'm going to ask a couple here so you can reload at hashtag OTPQ, okay? Do it, Mike. All right. John from Music City, which I'm guessing is Nashville. Are you more inclined to draft a backup quarterback this year or grab an experienced one from some other team? That's my own question that I submitted, Mike, by the way. Oh, you're John from Music City. <laughs> it's, got an, it's got an H in it. We'll kind of see how it goes. Um, you know, we've done, a, we've done a, quite a bit of work with those – those quarterbacks, you know, the top guys are, are going to go and we'll see kind of how those guys, you know, in those mid to later rounds fall. Uh, but Logan Woodside, I've said this before, he's done an outstanding job the last couple of years. He's really improved, had a great preseason for us last year and then um, had, had an injury that we got, you know, kind of got squared away. But looking forward to seeing what, what he can do. Um, and then we'll see kind of how the draft unfolds, how the post draft unfolds, and then see who's, who's kind of still out there from a veteran standpoint that we might could add post draft. All right, Chris from Loretta has this one. Is there still a chance we sign Jadevian Clowney? We'll see. Um, you know, like I said a couple of weeks ago, um, we, we had some discussions there, and um, and you know, we've had some dialogue back and forth. And you never close the door on anything. But I, as I said earlier, I don't think there's anything imminent uh, in in the works. But continue to kind of work through things and and see how they go. All right, Amy, you ready with hashtag OTPQ? You got anything you like or you want me to keep going? I've got one right here from Dougie. He says, when evaluating talent, are you more likely to draft a more talented player or a player who is a great scheme fit? That's a great question. I Obviously, you'd, you'd like to do both, but usually, usually the guys who are really good players, um, you, you find a way and, and they're pretty adaptive. I tell the scouts all the time, tell us what the player can do. I tell the coaches the same thing when they're evaluating players. Tell us what they're good at, and then we'll, we'll find a way to take what they're good at and 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 use it. And and if they're not good at one thing, then we'll try not to put them in the, in those situations offensively, defensively, or on special teams that may impact the team negatively. So tell us what they're good at. Um, so if they're really good at a lot of things, we'll find a way to take that player's skill set and utilize it to our advantage. Hickman, Kentucky is where I go next. That's not far from where you're from, is it? Yeah, it's, it's right across the border from where I grew up. All right, Rob in Hickman, Kentucky wants to know, are there specific things that you eat every year while the draft is going on? Besides M and M's, well, this year it's going to be this these twenty five sixty M and M's. Like I don't think I can put all of them down, but not really. I'll probably have a little chaw in. Um, that's that's kind of my standard. We usually have it have it catered. We've had several um, local uh, restaurants that that bring food in for us, and our staff does a great job of, of cooking stuff. Um, I think that Hugh Babies gave us some burgers last year, which I was a huge fan of. Shout out to uh, to Pat Martin and his crew. As far as for 
routine and ritual. There's always a standard pizza on Saturday because Saturday's fast and furious and pizza's easy. But as far as for something that I have to eat, I probably should not eat. I could stand to, to kind of miss a few calories, but um, nothing in particular. Rick in Chattanooga wants to know, do you have specific teams that you watch carefully because you know they are like-minded to you in terms of how they grade players during the scouting process. There's certain teams and, and certain GMs that that you know kind of run their their evaluation process that I think are really good evaluators, and and you're certainly mindful of those guys um, where they're at. If they see a player or they may have spent time with a player that that we like as well, and that's one of the things that that we typically um, try to try to track as a, as every team does, like who went on this team's visit, who worked out this player, who was at this guy's pro day. And this year, like that, we don't have that information, you know, because nobody really went anywhere. Um, we couldn't. Um, so that's going to be a little bit different for us. So you may not have a tip there on 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 that. But we usually look at a, at a few teams that, that I've got a ton of respect for and that, and that kind of see players similarly to the way we see them. All right. I've got one final question from hashtag OTPQ. Billy asks, what pick is the hardest? Is it the first pick or is it down the boards when you're searching for that diamond? That's a really good question. I, I think there's certainly more pressure to, to, to be right on, on the earlier picks because there's, um, there's more compensation involved in those players. You're expecting those players um, to contribute uh, to the team. But those guys are also typically a little easier to evaluate if that makes sense, like they, they pop off the tape. Some of those guys in, in the later rounds, you're, you, you see one or two things that there may be, you know, a, a string of plays where it's just okay. And you see them do one or two things and it just catches your eye as opposed to those early round guys where you see them, it's constant. They're popping off the tape. I'd say pressure wise, it's, 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 it's to hit on the early picks. And, and in the later rounds, it's to find those guys that for one or two plays show you something that you think you can get not just once or twice off the tape, but through coaching and working with them, you can get it, you know, a, a, a lot more um, frequently. Great questions. And when we do editions of the OTP, you know, you can always submit your questions at TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQs. We don't normally do these live, but I tell you, we've really enjoyed the one with Coach Vrabel and this one with John Robinson, because for us, Having the season ticket members with us for this is extra special. And I, I hope you know that our social digital media team all the way around has been trying to provide different and unique and consistent content for you throughout this process of self-quarantine that we've all been in. We, we get that football is not the most important thing in everybody's world, especially at this moment. We understand that, but we hope that what's been going on has given you an outlet, has gotten you fired up about the draft, gives you something else to think about as you experience some downtime and, and maybe, maybe you're a little bored. Maybe you want to get excited about something and hopefully getting excited about the Titans is a great thing. So if you're enjoying these things that we're doing, please let us know. We'll keep trying to do more of them. If you have a chance to watch a special edition of Titans All Access this weekend, check local listings. We've done a TV show. Miraculously, we've done a TV show that is going to be out there, again, because we're trying to be an outlet at this point for you. And, John, I just, you know, from a personal standpoint, Mike did this last week, and it meant so much to people. Thank you so much for, for taking your time six days before the draft to take questions from fans and be a guest on the official Titans podcast. It means a lot to Amy and me and to our staff, but I know it means so much to the season ticket members and to the people who are regular subscribers to the OTP. Yeah, and like you know, like I said when we first came on, like I'm I'm um, I'm more than than happy to do it. Again, we're the reason that 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 we do what we do, what you and Amy and Ashley and Brian and everybody behind the scenes that we do our our particular jobs um, with with the football team is for our fans is is for their entertainment football is it's our livelihood but it's an outlet for so many people and it's something that that our fans can get behind 
Um, it's a way to come out on Sundays or Sunday nights or Monday nights or whenever we're playing to come to Nissan Stadium or put us on TV and, and, and give them something to cheer for. And there's a lot of things going on in the world. Obviously, this pandemic has been um, it, it's it's really knocked us down to our knees and, and, and it's made me take a take a step back and, and, and look at life. But this, this this the game of football and the passion that that I, I know that that we as a staff and we as an organization have for the game of football and what it provides for our fans, um, we want to try to do everything we can. And uh, over the next four or five days, we're going to try to continue to to kick out some behind the scenes stuff here draft wise in my virtual war room. Um, maybe get me knocking back some of these M&Ms here a handful at <laughs> a time. Um, <laughs> but continue to provide that content for our fans so that, that it does give them an outlet. Um, as you said, to, to take, a, take a, take a minute away from, from, you know, all the world issues that are going on right now and, and, and enjoy something that they love. Well, the bottom line is the Tennessee Titans are trying to win this draft next week. That's it. And Amy, we're, we're certainly going to try to uh, win as much as we can with a lot of the coverage. We've got more OTPs coming out. You sat down with Coach McGinnis and Rhett Bryan to go through uh, the inside and outside linebackers and do a breakdown. That will come out as an OTP on Monday. Coach and Rhett, Jim Wyatt, will be back on the OTP next week for special editions. We've got a lot planned. And so, again, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you go to TennesseeTitans.com slash podcasts. Subscribe to the OTP or anywhere you get your podcasts. And, and Amy, we're two years into this thing and it's continuing to grow. Great work by you. Uh, thanks, Mike. Great work by you as well. Pandemic can't stop this podcast. It's not going to happen. So we're going to keep generating as much content as we possibly can. There's still football to talk about and we're going to keep talking. We're going to keep rolling. We'll remind you the OTP is sponsored now, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get the home field advantage with health care coverage from Farm Bureau Health Plans. They've been protecting Tennesseans since 1947. Again, thrilled to have them join. For Brian Myers and Ashley Farrell, great job making all of this content happen. For John Robinson and Amy Wells, Mike Keith, thanks you for joining the OTP. Peace.